Hi, God bless you. Welcome. Welcome to Truth in Brief. Uh, this is your brother Ferdinand, and I want to thank you for taking out the time to be with us at Truth in Brief. And uh, don't forget to like, to share, to subscribe, and uh, also to, you know, click on notifications so that you can be notified uh, when the videos come to you. And of course, there on our YouTube channel, you can find the archives, past Truth in Brief. They are all there. Uh, for your edification and blessing there at um, our YouTube channel. Praise God. God bless you. And today I want to challenge you to take action. Take action. Be an action-oriented person. No matter what the matter is, make sure you do something. You know, what I found is that a lot of us believers, we assume that all you need to do is just to pray. The fact is that prayer is central. Prayer is foundational. Prayer is constant. Prayer is fundamental. There is nothing we are going to do without prayer. And that's why, if you remember, we spent a lot of time, you know, studying powerful prayers, um, uh, you know, in the previous, in previous segments of Truth in Brief. And you can always access those um, there at YouTube. But the point I'm making is that after you have prayed, after you have sought for counsel, after you have looked at your situation, take action. Weigh the best options and do something. There are things that will not change until you do something. There are things that will not go away until you do something. Huh? And the scripture that I want to use for us to consider this is Genesis 42 and verse 1. Now, when Jacob learned that there was grain in Egypt, he said to his sons, why do you look at one another? Now, here is the background. Remember, there was a famine. Joseph was already in Egypt. And then there was this very bad famine, which, you know, was a major problem across the entire Middle East and the known world at that time. But there was food in Egypt. Courtesy of the revelation that God gave to Pharaoh, interpreted by Joseph, and then implemented by Joseph. There was a storage program. That thing tells us not to squander everything. There we are years of plenty, followed by years of famine. Wise leaders, wise believers don't squander everything in the idea that God will provide. I'm living by faith. God will provide. Joseph was also a man of faith, but he told them to put aside 20%, one-fifth, you understand, for the future. That's a major lesson for all of us as believers. So that if things change, at least you have something while you are trusting God, something that continues to meet the different needs that you face. And then, by the way, it becomes a blessing to other people. But in Genesis 42 verse 1, I like how the contemporary English version puts it. When Jacob found out there was grain in Egypt, he said to his sons, why are you just sitting here staring at one another? <laughs> you know, there were, imagine 11 brothers, because Joseph was already in Egypt. So these 11 men, Judah, Simeon, and um, Zebulon, Naphtali, and Dan, and Asia, and all of these people, they sat around. Everybody was hungry. Their families are hungry. And there is nothing to eat. And these grown men that have families to feed sat down there, and they're just looking at each other, angry and hungry. Their children are hungry, babies are crying at the background, and grown men are just looking at each other. And Jacob, their father, was sitting. Now, by this time, Jacob was already more than 100 years old. And Jacob is sitting down, he's watching his sons, just looking at, moping at him. Eh? And I can imagine some of them scolding, blaming somebody for the person. Why is there no food in this house? Just angry. Jacob said, why are you sitting here staring at one another? You do something. I heard that there is grain in, there is food in Egypt. Get going. Pack a bag and go and get something for all of us. You want us to die here? Remember there were four lepers who were at the entrance of the city of Samaria. And they said something to themselves in the midst of the famine that was ravaging their city. They said, why sit here until we die? Why are we sitting down here idle, doing nothing? Look, there are people that are waiting for a big miracle. They are waiting for something that will do boo and solve all their problems. But the practical action that they can take to change things, they don't do anything. See, the plan of God is that you will pray, you will seek God, you will believe the promises of God, 
But when you have finished doing all of these things, take action. Jacob said, why are you sitting down here moping at one another? There is food in Egypt. That's how they went to Egypt. And they found more than food. Hallelujah. That's where they met Joseph. That's where the story changed. That's where abundance came because they took action. They took a step to go to somewhere that they heard there was food. Look, some people are applying for jobs and they are praying that God will give them jobs. But you just sit down somewhere. Go and volunteer somewhere. Do something. Go to a place where there is possibility of a solution. If you are believing God for healing and the healing by miracle has not yet manifested, take an action. Go and see the doctor. That's part of God's provision. And keep trusting God. Keep quoting scripture. Huh? If you are trusting God for a large financial supply, begin to use the little that you have, the $100, the, the $200, the, the, the $5,000, whatever currency it is in your own something, and do what you can do that God can bless. I'm encouraging you to be an action-oriented person. When you have prayed, when you have researched, when you have asked questions, when you have you know, sought the face of God, then take action. Act in the conviction and in the direction that the Spirit of God has put inside your heart. And you will be amazed at the results. The thing may start small, but because you are going in God's direction, He can then add blessing and power and increase. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask that as this viewer now takes practical action, you will make a way where there seems to be no way. I ask for abundance, supernatural intervention. Father, by the time they step out, let them find that the road is clear. What they are afraid of has been taken care of. Where the, there was a blockage, now there is a breakthrough in Jesus' name. Where there was lack, Father, there will be abundance. Because your children are stepping out in faith. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. Be an action-oriented person. I'm not talking of reckless action. You just wake up and start doing something. No, I'm talking about doing your due diligence, praying, fasting, studying, researching, looking for counsel. But when you finish gathering all of those things, by all means, act. Bye-bye.